So I'm with Ian Mullin here at SafeLock Valves and Fittings. We've come to look at some components that they're machining on their star sliding head lays. Ian, thanks for the invitation today. Let's get straight into this. Uh, I'm interested in the types of parts that you're machining here at SafeLock and how long they're taking you to do uh, and what they are. So pick a part and tell us, tell us about it. Um, this is an aluminium part. Uh, its special feature is the fact we've got um, a seal face here. Uh, we used to do this on a fixed head machine and in order to achieve the quality it would have a secondary polishing operation. Uh, however, now we've started to do it on the sliding head machine. Um, the finish is as you can see here and removes the polishing uh, operation altogether. Furthermore, it is now an automated operation whereas before we had to unload them by hand. So why do you think the machine is able to produce such a better surface finish for you? Um, it's a number of reasons really. One is mineral oil helps uh, a, a lot. Also, uh, the rigidity of the tooling and the slide. Uh, these are dovetail slides, I believe, in this type of machine. And it does seem to give you, a, you know, a vibration trouble-free finishes. So you mentioned the second point about the speed of production and the fact you've automated it. How much faster now are you making this than, than you were on your fixed head machines? There's definitely a cycle time improvement, probably by half, but probably what's more significant is the fact you're no longer un unloading it by hand, it's uh, fully automated. Okay, so that's component one. Let's have a look at this very uh, component here. Tell us about that. Um, well, this in itself is, is um, not very interesting because it's a, it's a very simple part in respect. It's a washer that's got a one millimeter wide slot running through the middle of it. What is interesting is the methodology of, of how we've managed to do this. Uh, we can machine the whole part complete on the main spindle, just allowing the part off uh, material to hold the part together. We will come then with the sub spindle to support the middle and the OD and part it off and the job will come off in two halves into a tin. So is that an engineered solution by yourself or your team here? Uh, it's a team effort, that, definitely. So before you were having to maybe take this off and then put it onto another machine in order to essentially cut the part in half really? That's correct, and you can only imagine the extra time involved to uh, accomplish that. Okay, now something a little bit more complex. What about this one? Um, it's a stainless steel part as well, um, which can be quite pro problematic using mineral oil machines uh, due to the nature of stringy swarf. There's also quite a lot of features on there to handle, so you'd need quite a, a heavy tooled up machine to produce that part. And this is what in, interests me really because I looked at this and thought there's quite a lot of uh, operations to be done on this machine, quite a lot of tools that you might need. You mentioned something poignant about stringy swarf. Have you used STARS HFT software in order to try and crack that? Uh, not at the moment, but it's something we'll definitely look into. So something like this, um, Ian, wh which one of your machines is actually producing this from STAR? Uh, we'd have to do that on our ECAS, which is a twin turret on the main spindle and then a platen on the sub spindle. So why are you having to do that on the ECAS rather than the others? Um, the ECAS has got uh, enough tool station to support all the features on this job uh, and has better management of swarf control due to uh, the ability to go from sliding head to a fixed head method with the turrets. Do you think by having HFT um, you'll maybe then be able to bring that part across to one of your newer machines? Definitely yes, it's always a problem stainless with mineral oil. Yeah. Now, final two parts here, I know there's, there's actually three here, but this is a, a good example of going then on to what traditionally a lot of companies might consider a sliding head turn-in. Tell us about this and what may be the, the tolerances you're chasing on something over that length. Um, this is actually a probe. Um, the, the finish for the first part of this diameter has to be of valve quality. Um, now, typically, if we would try to produce that on a fixed head, which would be very, very difficult indeed, I really don't think you would achieve the finish that's required on the drawing. Okay, um, are you making those in significant volumes? Uh, about 200 at a time. 200 on a run. Okay, what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to tell you the cycle times on all of these parts, so stick around for that. And then, let's just pick this one in. Um, this is an interesting part in that the, it's got a feature on the ball there, which is actually a slot. Um, which is becoming more and more common on CNC lathes uh, now. Uh, and we use um, carbide tooling to literally take slithers out of the ball so we achieve the, the required depth. 
And which of your star machines are you doing that on? Uh, we can do that on any of our JM machines. And, and with something like this, would you ever experience, with it being stainless 316, any chatter or any vibration on the machine when you're machining? Um, again, th this is where sliding heads really score points. You're machining right where the guard bush is, which is where your support is. Uh, and you almost certainly eliminate all your vibration. So to finish the set in, tell us about this part here. Um, this is a needle valve pin. It's made in one hit. Uh, we did actually make this from round bar as well. So we balance mill the hexagon on, balance turn it. And as you can see, there's a 0.8 mil diameter in the middle, which would make that pretty much impossible to do on a uh, fixed head machine. Do you ever get any issues with, with that? I mean, that's a small diameter. I know some might be machining smaller, but still might seem a bit flimsy. Am I wrong? It's, it is flimsy, and you could probably bend it in your hand, but again, because of the guide bush technology, um, it, doesn't, it seems to be almost limitless how da damage you can produce. So. And what's the thread on the end? It's uh, M3. Okay, right, so now I'm going to guess the cycle time um, for you manufacturing these components on your star machines. Uh, we'll start with this one. I believe, I would guess that that's going to be somewhere in the region of about two and a half minutes. Tell me. That's two minutes, Paul. Two minutes. So I'm, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm 30 seconds out on that one. Okay. This one, well, that's going to be, um, that's going to be a lot more, in my opinion. I would say that's going to be seven minutes. Uh, we're around about 12 minutes with that one. Okay, so I was, well, I was well out with that one, but the other way. Okay, that's interesting, but it's still fast when you look at the, all the, um, the features on there. This component, I'm going to guess, at six minutes. We're around about five with that one. <laughs> okay, pretty close. I'm getting better. And then the longer part here. Well, this is a, this is a tricky one, but I'm probably going to say ooh, four minutes. Yes, yeah, around four minutes. That, yeah. Four minutes, okay, pretty good. I'm getting better. This one here, well, that really is, I'm not sure how much you're going to have to back off on your speeds and feeds to achieve this. So I might go for maybe three minutes. We're around about four and a half minutes on that. Okay, so I'm too fast. And then the final one here, and I think to complete this, I'm going to go with just over two minutes, two minutes, 10 seconds. So one minute, 45 seconds. So I wasn't far out on some, but... Um, I haven't used a machine for a long time. But it, so tell me, Ian, how much of a difference has these star sliding head lathes made to your company since you've kind of embarked on the sliding head route rather than fixed? Uh, it's made a massive difference. Gives you a, a totally new outlook on some components, um, which obviously you would quote parts differently, which will attract more orders. Um, and also the quality as well is massively improved. So.